Hi, my name is Alexey, and this is my second vlog. In this vlog, I want to talk about my trip to North Korea. I have traveled to North Korea almost seven years ago, in November 2013. So you're probably asking yourself, why are you talking about it now? Well, why not? Seven years ago I was not much into vlogging, um, and uh, North Korea was, is and remains a hot topic. I could tell you really many interesting stories about my trip. But this would certainly take several hours. For this reason, I want to try a different approach. You know, I see myself as an ambitious photographer. And I want to tell you about North Korea by showing you 30 photos I have taken in North Korea. Sometimes when you look at your old photos and zoom in, you discover details which you were not aware of before. And these details make the story which photo is telling much more interesting and much more richer. But before looking at these photos, here is some basic information about my trip. We are in November 2013. Kim Jong-il, the eternal secretary, is almost two years dead. iPhone 5 is on the market almost one year. And uh, such crappy movies like uh, Fast and Furious 6 is in the cinema. Hey, just some basic facts everybody can relate to. Why did I decide to go to North Korea? Well, I was fascinated about this country. Thanks to media, you know, the overblown state propaganda, the image Western media has created about it, and also some blogs of uh, travel bloggers, I have read, which really kindled my interest. Also, um, I was born in the Soviet Union, and I remember that as a child, I was exposed myself to state propaganda. So I wanted to relate to that. Hence, I knew what was expecting me. I knew that this would become a complete propaganda tour, from beginning to end. As a tourist, you are not allowed to travel freely in North Korea, you have to take local certified guides. And everything you see is planned beforehand. So before you enter the country, you know what you will see on day 1, 2, 3, etc. And exactly this was fascinating. Because if you open your eyes and your ears, you can find so many interesting details between the lines. As a German citizen, I had no troubles finding a travel agency to book a tour to North Korea. And I tell you, this was quite pricey. Just imagine uh, you are booking a tour uh, from Germany. Well, let's say you fly from Germany with economy flight to Beijing and stay there for two and a half weeks in a five-star hotel. That amount of money I paid for my six days trip to North Korea. Well, actually, it were five full days. And I remember a friend telling me, hey, by going to North Korea and paying so much money, you are supporting the regime. Of course I did. By the way, hi Ben. I mean, this is the only way to visit the country, to see it for yourself. And I was about to experience a Stalin era park. This was a really surreal trip. Sometimes I was feeling as if I was in a bad dream. But enough of this prelude. Let's go over to the photos. On the first photo, we see a plane of Air Koryo, the North Korean airline. 
Usually you enter the country by first traveling to Beijing and from there flying with air courier to Pyongyang, the capital of North Korea. Arrived at the airport, I was met by two guides, a woman in her mid-30s and an elderly man, and there was also a young driver. They were driving me around in this old, classy Mercedes-Benz E-Class, which you can see on this photo. Driving around in Pyongyang, I have noticed this really huge hotel, which is called Ryugyong Hotel, and according to Wikipedia, this is the tallest unopened hotel in the world. So, seeing this hotel, I asked my guides if I could not take a picture of it together with the car. And voila, no problem, they just halted in the middle of the road and let me take this photo. Of course, if you are in Pyongyang, you have to see the local traffic policewomen. They say these women are all under 30 and unmarried. Just look at this cutie pie. So she was standing there on the crossing and regulated the traffic, saluting to every black car passing by, ours included. If we continue the topic of cuteness, on the next photo you see two female soldiers holding their hands. I took this photo very fast since I did not want to be discovered, and this is taken on the grounds of the mausoleum of the two eternal pharaohs, Kim Il-sung and Kim Jong-il. That day there was a whole battalion of soldiers to see the two holy mummies. And we walked out together with the soldiers and I noticed these girls holding their hands, which is apparently quite normal for North Korean girls. Or maybe even for some very lonely North Korean men, who knows. Anyway cute, don't you think? Reminds me of those uh, school or kindergarten outings where kids are holding their hands. Soldiers are everywhere in North Korea. I have never visited a country with so much military on the streets. Just marching by or working on some construction sites, building roads or houses, or on some roadblocks, controlling passing cars. And I could not stop the feeling that I'm seeing teenage soldiers. They were short. With my humble 180 centimeters, or almost 6 feet, I see myself in an average European height. But in North Korea, I was really feeling myself as huge. You see the relation on the next photo, where I'm standing next to a newly wedded couple, in front of the statues of the two pharaohs. Sorry for calling them pharaohs all the time, but this is actually what they are. Two mummified pharaohs turned to gods. So it is a custom that people in North Korea, when they are marrying, have to take a photo in front of the statues and lay flowers before them. And this is what my guides asked me to do when we arrived at this place. I bought flowers, laid them before the statues and showed my respect by bowing. They were later asking me at the next statue locations to do the same, but I just coldly refused. Propaganda is omnipresent in the loudspeakers, on the posters and placards, like on this photo taken in Kaesong. Kaesong is a town not far from the DMZ or the Demilitarized Zone. Anyway, this photo was taken on a street crossing in Kaesong and we see two bicyclists. In general, North Koreans love bicycles. We also see a huge military poster and I would really love to know what it says. So if there are any Korean speakers watching, please write the translation in the comments. Thanks. Anyway, the most interesting detail in this photo for me, which I discovered later, is this man here, taking a leak. Nothing unusual. We can observe shameless public urinating also in other countries. Let's carry on with the propaganda. As we can see on this photo, pictures of the two eternal leaders are even hung in each wagon of the Pyongyang subway trains. As a tourist, you may ride with your guides several stops of a specified subway line. You see on this photo how bad the lighting is in the subway trains. You will notice this attempt to save energy on the subway, on the street lanterns, or on the passing by tramways. But what is more interesting for me in this photo are not the portraits, but when we zoom in, we see this woman 
with her hand on her husband's lap. Somehow intimate and touching, don't you think? Let's stay on the same train. On this snapshot we see a word, a German word, scribbled on the train door. It says Unfug and means nonsense. And so I felt while doing this trip, thinking, this can't be, I'm in a bad dream. Das ist Unfug. Anyway, I think we are in an old East German train, which was written off and sold cheaply to North Korea. And uh, I really would not expect North Koreans scribbling German words on train doors. Back to the portraits of the two Eternals, which we see in the background of this photo. We are on the Kim Il-sung square, right in the center of Pyongyang. This place is famous for its military parades. We see a youngster playing volleyball and uh, that stern looking lady in the background is actually renting this volleyball to the guys. We see also a squatting man smiling and smoking a cigarette. I have never been to a country with so many smoking men. All men I saw in North Korea were either smoking or just pausing before lighting the next cigarette. And drinking they love too, as I heard from my guide. So alcoholism related domestic violence is common in North Korea. Continuing with the topic of uh, public leisure activities, on this photo we see a shooting gallery. If we zoom in, we see that these guys are shooting with some kind of corks. That is also why the lady is standing so dangerously close to the targets, because she is not afraid of being hit by a cork. But I've noticed another interesting detail on this photo. If we look at the young man aiming, we see a piece of cloth on his knee. Is he hurt? I don't think so. I think he has just old and torn pants. Not far from this place, across the river Tedong, is this monument called Juche Tower. Juche is North Korean state ideology of self-reliance. I think that Juche is also symbolically represented by these idealistic figures. The man in front holds a hammer and thus represents the working class. The woman next to him represents the farmers and therefore holds a sickle. And the guy behind is representing intelligentsia, holding a paintbrush. It's quite interesting to see the difference between this socialist symbol and those, for example, of Soviet Union or China, where intelligentsia was always degraded or downplayed. But here it is part of the Holy Trinity. And yet it is still standing behind, behind the farmers and the workers who are more important. You can actually take an elevator up this Juche Tower until that flame and take a look at the city from above, which I did. But first, here is a shot of the same Juche Tower at night. You see how sparse the city lights are, saving energy. Only the important objects are lit up. At some point at night, many lights are shut off. Let's go up this Juche Tower, shall we? From the above you can see for example this view, a living area which radiates everything but optimism. Grey and shabby apartment houses and roofs which are in desperate need of repair. Here is a person, probably a woman, squatting and uh, either cooking or cleaning something outside. And here this looks like somebody is watching the telly. What are they watching? Certainly no Disney cartoons. Let's take a look at another view from above, where we see some one-story houses with the same amount of optimism, namely none. If we zoom in, we see for example this yard with some soldiers, and one is either cleaning or filling up the general's car with gas. But the more interesting detail on this shot is this man on the roof. What is he doing there? Repairing the roof? Doesn't seem like it. Sunbathing? Well, not in November. Maybe hiding from somebody? Is he probably a thief? We'll never know. Let's carry on with our slideshow. On this photo you can see my guide and driver enjoying cold noodles. At this point I was already long full, but they were just starting. They were stuffing the food inside as if it was their last meal. I could not blame them. We also see that the restaurant is quite empty. And yes it was. I was the only customer. 
As a tourist in North Korea, you will eat only in restaurants for foreign tourists. Average North Koreans cannot afford such lavish meals. In general, the food was okay. The only thing which really struck me was the rice. After living several years in Japan, I know how good rice tastes. But what I ate in North Korea was bad. The rice was grey and tasted a little bit of earth. But this was the best they had. On the next shot we see how a meal is prepared. We are in a former sanatorium for generals, which was transformed into a hotel for tourists. My driver is pouring gasoline on clams. They told me this is their local delicatess. Clams in gasoline. You buy some clams, put them on a rice mat, pour lots of gasoline and put it on fire. He was constantly pouring more gasoline on it. I think in total he used one and a half liters. As you can think, clams smelled and tasted after gasoline. On the next photo, I think we are again in the city of Kaesong, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, another statue for which I refused to buy flowers. But the real magnet on this photo are the three squatting ladies. And squatting is actually something common in North Korea. And not only in North Korea, but also in my home country Kazakhstan. Squatting down, having a chat, biding your time. I think that squatting is reserved in the former Soviet republics to the so-called gopniks or chaffs in British English or Pols in German. I mean those um, not so well educated young men in tracksuits, squatting, smoking cigarettes, drinking beer and pestering passerbys. But the people on my photos are certainly no gopniks which we can see on this photo. Zooming in, we see a bunch of children squatting there. This is a trolley bus stop and they are waiting for their trolley bus. On the other side of the road, we see a couple squatting and apparently having a discussion. And I think that this man is regretting marrying this woman. By the way, notice these two boys sitting on a trash bin. The very same boys we see on the next photo of the same trolley bus stop. These boys are wearing scarlet red neckties and actually they are members of the so-called Korean Children's Union, which is actually just another pioneer movement. Well, an organization for children operated by a communist party. Actually, people of my age and older from the former Soviet republics or let's say East Germany very well know these children's organizations with the slogan always prepared. We were members of such pioneers' movements when we were children. Anyway, it's also cute how this little girl is eyeballing me from behind a tree. On the next photo, we see a small part of the road just before entering JSA, Joint Security Area, the Truce Village on the border between North and South Korea. The main subject of this photo are these concrete blocks on both sides of the road which, when we look closer at them, are held by small wooden blocks. When you kick out these wooden blocks, the concrete blocks fall on the road, this way blocking the enemy transport. As my guides also told me, on both sides of this road are minefields. Notice also the steel cables, which connect each concrete block to each other, probably as a temporary prevention for them falling down. We are on the North Korean side of the Joint Security Area. On this photo we see a soldier in a beautiful Ginkgo tree alley. This soldier was accompanying us during the guided JSA tour. It was a sunny and warm autumn day. When I saw this alley, I could not resist but take a photo. But as you can see, my interest was not for the alley itself, but rather for the soldier in it. I made a face as if I was fascinated by the beautiful autumn colors, but focused on him. His priceless face expression reminds me of a quote from a book I dearly love. This is a Russian book called Twelve Chairs. Что вы на меня смотрите такими злыми глазами, как солдат на вож? Why are you looking at me with such evil eyes like a soldier at the Laos? On the way to the JSA, we took a break at a roadside souvenir shop. We see here a North Korean highway. 
We stayed there for about half an hour. During that time, this vehicle here and that bicycle over there passed. And also, as you can see on the next photo, another bicycle. Such quotation mark busy quotation mark highway is unimaginable in Europe. And this is not a highway, but a country road. I took this photo when I was walking with my guide from an ancient king's grave towards the car. She told me, look, they are carrying pigs. I turned my head to the left and saw these bicyclists. And indeed, the first two were carrying pigs on their bicycles. Hey, is this pig sleeping? Oh no, I'm afraid it's slaughtered and its innards are in the front sack. I think this was a rare opportunity and I was grateful to my guide for letting me taking this photo. Let's return to Pyongyang. We are in the National State Circus, in the middle of an acrobatic performance. The girl floating in the air tries to do a triple backflip, after which she has to take a grip of the hands of the man swinging towards her. And she failed. She fell on the net below. Good that there was a net. In the circus tradition, if you fail to perform a trick, you do it again. And so she did, but she could not get hold of his hands again and fell on the net. And she tried again and fell again on the net. Imagine Kim Jong-un would be in the audience. Anyway, they gave up and continued with the show. Let's take a look on yet another performance. This photo was taken by my guide, since you can see me dancing with the schoolgirls. That evening, I was the only visitor in this middle school. So these children were doing a whole concert. This was really awkward. These kids were doing a complete show only for me. 30 or 40 minutes. You have probably watched uh, some uh, YouTube videos about North Korea where kids, uh, really small kids, are performing, either playing or uh, dancing or singing with this uh, typical rubber smile on their faces. Really creepy. And this was here uh, um, also the case. Although I heard from a guide that they are doing these concerts for Western tourists regularly. Near the end of the concert, they dragged me out and made me dance with them. I took this photo on my last morning in Pyongyang. I guess it was around 6 a.m. in the morning. I took this photo out of my hotel window, the Yanggakdo International Hotel, which stands on an island in the middle of the Tedong River. Zooming in at this bridge, we see how many people there are already outside. These small ships were constantly digging for pebbles in the river, for construction as I heard. By the way, that spider-shaped building back there is the so-called Rungrado 1st of May Stadium. According to Wikipedia, it is the largest stadium in the world and holds such annual events like the famous Arirang Festival. We have arrived at the last photo of this photographic trip, taken from the window of the plane bound for Beijing. We see the construction site of the Pyongyang airport for the new terminal. As of today, this terminal is finished and open. That's it guys. Oh no, wait, there is a bonus photo. On which we see me with the two North Korean soldiers in the joint security area. The officer to my left was our guide in the JSA, telling us about the history of the Korean War and the truth, that is, as they see it. He also told me to tell Mr. Obama that they would be ready for him should he ever attack their fatherland. Unfortunately, I could not pass this message to Mr. Obama until today. Well, that's about it. If you have some questions regarding my trip to North Korea, leave them in the comments. And if there are enough questions, I can probably do a follow-up vlog. Also, as I told you, I feel myself or I see myself as an accomplished, not, not accomplished, an ambitious photographer. So I ask you also to subscribe to my Instagram page. Link is in the description. Also, there are some, uh, well, some video clips I have shot in North Korea and you can find these on the playlist called North Korea on my channel. There is also one short video showing this uh, children concert in that middle school. Alright, um, this is it. Thanks for watching, please subscribe. My name is Alexei and uh, see you next time.